I'm sure a lot of your audience wants to know. How about you? Are you in a relationship right now? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Right now I'm at the very beautiful park. It's called Tao Dan Park. And today I'm gonna meet with one of my friends, Phuc Mup. He's a YouTuber here and looks like he's filming right now. Hi Phuc! Oh, Kek Bang! Hi Phuc! My day, Von, what are you doing here? I thought you lived in Hanoi. Well, I just moved here two weeks ago to do this video with you because today we're gonna talk about a very, very interesting topic. Are you ready? I'm ready for anything. Let's do it. Thank you so much, folks, for being here with me today. So I know that you've been here for eight years yes. and you already got married. First, I'm gonna ask folks some quick questions and quick answer. Okay, I'm ready. Three words to describe Vietnamese women. Thật ra, Phúc có bốn từ để giải thích phụ nữ của Việt Nam. Đây là công, dùng, ngon, không phải là ngon, ngon và hạn. And this talks about how they work in the house, their personality, the way they speak, and their behavior. What do you love the most about Vietnamese women? Man, it's how much Vietnamese women focus on the family. And me, I'm a guy where, you know, when I started dating my wife, that's the first thing I look for. It's like, all right, well, is this going to make a good mother? You know, I, I saw that immediately with my wife hanging out with her family, the way she takes care of the nephews and nieces, and just the family in general. So to me, in my experience, Vietnamese women are very caring and really uh, spend their time for others in the family. Yeah, I do agree because in general, most of Vietnamese women are very family oriented and I feel like we're being raised that way mm -hmm. and we look up to our mothers too. Like they go to work super early, uh, do the housework and then just take care of the family but at the same time they like managers and bosses mm -hmm. in the company. So three things not to do on the first date. Don't offer them a cigarette. Right. I don't smoke. I quit smoking over 10 years ago. But one thing you'll notice in Vietnam is Vietnamese women don't smoke. You just don't see it. Uh, second one, don't joke about the culture and Vietnam in general. Third one, don't go into it with the mindset of a Westerner, let's say, an American. You know, I come from sure. university in America. Women are more to y'all, mm. independent, you know, right. from a young age. Whereas in Vietnam, women live with their parents for a long time. And even when they don't, they still strongly respect their parents and their parents' wishes. One culture shock while dating. First culture shock, I started dating my wife six years ago. Yeah, we officially became boyfriend-girlfriend in 2016. And she would come over, we would hang out, and she's like, I have to go home. I go, what? She's like, I have to go home. I'm like, what, what do you mean you have to go home? And you're 28, your parents live in America. What do you mean you have to go home before 12? And she's like, if I don't go home before 12, my brother and sister will tell my parents and I'll get in trouble. And I'm like, what? I really respected that. She never slept in my house. And go home before 12? Exactly. <laughs> We're like Cinderella's. We have to go home before 12, before midnight. <laughs> One culture shock about your wedding. Maybe like wedding rituals or wedding tradition. I would say, first thing is all of the gifts, okay? Because I have a picture holding this giant pig with my best man. And I'm like, where'd this pig come from? What are we doing? Are we going to eat this? Like, and we had all these random gifts and gold and all this stuff that it's just oh, yeah. not part of the weddings that I'm used to. And then on top of that, uh, the guests, they don't bring wedding gifts. They just mm. give you money. Fun fact, my wedding cost exactly $1,000. 50 guests with food and drink, an MC, the place, everything involved, $1,000 and we got exactly 1,000 back <laughs> from the guests. So I had a free wedding. So you're not losing any money. It was great. The weddings here, you invite everybody. You right. invite your neighbors, your parents, friends. Hairdresser. Everyone comes to the wedding. I've been to weddings with like five, 600 people. So wow. you can imagine how much profit they make from every guest giving them. So can you tell me why? you choose Vietnam and what do you like so far? And if you can do it in Vietnamese, because this Vietnamese is super good, Xin chào mọi người, mình tên là Phúc Mập, bật tin tiếng Anh là Hurley. Mình đến Việt Nam 8 năm trước để dạy tiếng Anh. Nhưng mà sau khi bắt đầu dạy tiếng Anh, Phúc đã gặp vợ của mình. Và vợ của mình là một người khuyên khích Phúc bắt đầu quay YouTube và lên TV ở Việt Nam. So sau khi bắt đầu kênh YouTube của mình, mình được mời lên TV và lên phim của Việt Nam. Vì vậy bây giờ uh, mình có nhiều công việc ở đây Giáo viên này, MC này 
TV personality na yun, FinCat TV, ba YouTuber na yun, new company. Why? So we're gonna talk about dating, uh, marriage, and during marriage. How did you meet your wife, and how long did you wait to propose her? My wife grew up and lives right next to where I work, mm. so we had some mutual friends. We met. We all went out to dinner. I added her on Facebook from there, and then I just went for it and asked her out. Mm. And I said, "Hey, you know, let's go on a date." I took her to uh, uh, Pit Nung, you know, like a, a grilled meat restaurant first. Right. And we dated for almost close to two years oh, wow. before I asked her to marry me. And it's funny because uh, one big culture shock when it comes to dating a Vietnamese girl is you meet the family so fast. I met her mom after, you know, right after we became boyfriend girlfriend. And, you know, in Vietnamese, I said, oh, chào chị, chị có khỏe không? And you don't call the mom Che. Found that out <laughs> right. Real quick. Yeah, I meet her family, and then after we've been dating a while, her mom's like, "So, uh, you know, khi nào đám cưới?" Right. Khi nào có con? When you have children, right? Yeah. She's like, "When are you getting married?" And I said, uh, "I just started calling her Maya, so I don't have to worry about pronouns." Wow, I've nice. I've called her Maya since the beginning. And because I'm Vietnamese, so I know the pressure that a lot of parents or like older people put on uh, women in general, like. You a that means like on the shelf. Yeah, on the shelf. Nobody wants you. <laughs> yes, when you reach 30, so it's kind of late when like you reach 28, 30, you don't have anyone um, date to you or you're not thinking about marriage. So did your wife talk to you about that or did she pressure yeah. on not, that? Not or? pressure, but she definitely talked about it. Okay. And it's very apparent. Like I said, her mother-in-law or my mother-in-law, her mother asked. You know, when are you getting married? And I'm like, wow. Rushing you. <laughs> straight up ask like that. Okay, man. And, uh, <laughs> you know, her Vietnamese family in America, who'd never met me, said, be careful, those Western guys, they come here, they date a girl, and then they just leave. That's why I heard too, in Vietnam in general. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is common. I mean, I'm not going to call anyone out, but I, I know people that dated here for a long time and then just dipped out and just left, you okay. know? So as an interracial couple, do you have any struggles or language barrier or any culture shocks uh, when you actually got married? Uh, yes, the first year, my wife will be the first one to tell you. She realized like, Westerners have a completely different mindset, you know? And, and lifestyle. me, uh, mm -hmm. I'm a very adventurous person. And this is a girl, she'd been to Thailand before on a, a, uh, a tour company's trip with her okay. family, but hadn't traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm somebody, I've been to like 11 countries, I'm always trying to go to the next spot, and I had her traveling a lot. So she realized very quickly like, man, this is a whole different mindset right. than what I'm used to. But a lot of guys here, they don't take any time to learn Vietnamese. And the okay? culture, it's very important to learn the culture too. Of course. Yeah. And you know, a lot of guys, they don't do it because they don't need to. Their wife speaks perfect English. Oh, yeah. and my wife's English was good enough, but I just saw it as my uh, check my responsibility, my duty for not only her, but especially her family. Her family doesn't speak English. Right. So if I'm going to spend all this time for the rest of my life with her family, I better learn Vietnamese. Yes, and Vietnamese women are very proud of that when their boyfriend or their husband willing to learn about the culture. I know you have some arguments about the culture differences, so how did you make it up for her or how did you guys make sure that you're on the same page? I bet it happens to you. She's like, why are you home so late? Do you not care about me? What would you do? Well, would you leave her alone or would you like be like, oh, I'm so sorry or stuff like that? So uh, one thing that I live by, guys, is happy wife, happy life. Okay. There you go. So <laughs> there, there's a, a new term that even my Vietnamese students are using, uh, simp and simping. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, like mm -hmm. a beta male, where mm -hmm. they do anything for a girl and they go out of their way and you know get in the friend zone very often. But when you're married, I think that that simp takes a, a different path, a different uh, perspective, because you can be as alpha as you want, but if your wife isn't happy, in the end, your relationship's not going to be happy. So you should sacrifice for your wife, you know, even if it means cutting some time out of staying out late or doing extra cleaning or <laughs> buying her something. Also in terms of the culture, um, I want you guys to take note is that um, Vietnamese girls, we say có là không, không là có. It means like when we say yes, it means no. And it's just like the opposite and it's always about my reading. Uh, whenever a Vietnamese girl get mad and say like, if you ask her, are you okay? And she said, she's okay, she's not fine. 
Yes. Is there is there a problem? No, no problem. No, that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> if she keeps silence, that's a problem. <laughs> in your marriage, in Vietnamese culture, um, I don't know if you have seen some TikTok videos um, that like the wife keeps the money. <laughs> the wife is like nóc nhà, you know, like be in charge of the finance. It's what that get the info from the other end. Yeah. So like, how does it work for you? <laughs> this is a great question, and you know, it's funny. I mentioned before, like going on TV and speaking Vietnamese on TV. I learned a lot of Vietnamese oh, yeah. while we're filming a TV show. You know, for example, I'm on that show, uh, but on the show, we talked a lot about marriage. And one episode was about who controls the money. And they they, they talked about this term, Quiden. Do you know Quiden? Quiden, yes. Uh, Quiden is a term <laughs> in Vietnamese, uh, which is the extra money that the husband keeps from the wife. Hide it. <laughs> yeah, and they're talking about this, and I, I, I'm like that kid in um, the movie with uh, Patrick Bateman where they go down to Mexico. Anyway, famous scene where he's like, you guys are getting paid for this? I'm looking around like, you guys got extra money? What? <laughs> so uh, for me, you know, I, I look at uh, uh, hai trong mộ, hai vợ chồng là một người. You know, a husband and wife, we are one. And there shouldn't be secrets and things kept from each other. I'm just very little about that. So in my life, uh, I control the money because I have a good system. I have the Excel spreadsheet with the budget. Wow every account from Vietnam to America to stocks to crypto every couple weeks that's updated oh. and it's transparent so to me it's not an issue you know we both contribute pay our bills and then after that if she wants to buy shoes her passion is shoes yeah she buy shoes if I want to buy camera equipment I buy camera equipment there's not really a secret about that right so you have control of your money it's like when you want to surprise your wife you know you have not have a Gui Dan anymore, but you have your own money to actually buy the stuff that she really wants. So yeah. I think it's, yeah, like Gui Dan in Vietnamese, um, in Vietnam, actually it was my reverse culture shock because I was like, why, why did you guys have to do that? But then like, um, we Vietnamese, we think that if you have less money, you're gonna have, uh, you don't have enough money to drink or you don't have money to like pay for other girls, you know? Choi guy. Choi guy, yeah, so that's why. I'm sure a lot of your audience wants to know, how about you? Are you in a relationship right now? Well, I'm in a relationship with food and culture. Oh, that explains <laughs> Let's put it that way, you know? Well, thank you so much for, for being here today. First of all, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure collaborating in this video. Guys, I hope my advice helped you. Uh, if I could leave you with anything, it's if you're going to date a girl from a different culture that speaks a different language, the biggest sign of respect that you can show her is taking time to learn her language and her culture. You don't have to be fluent. I'm not fluent in Vietnamese yet, but I put the time in to constantly learn about my wife's background and her language, and not only her, but her family appreciates that. Not just happy wife, happy life, but happy in-laws happy life as well so to make sure you guys remember to follow what the fuck thank you for taking the time to watch and thank you for having me on here